and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some mono black midrange. That's right, we are going to be playing a mono black deck here in standard. Reason being is we want to take uh, advantage of two pretty powerful cards that don't see a ton of play, but we got Dread Presence, the new card from M20, which I have been really liking. Whenever we played our chromatic black deck the other day, this card felt really strong. You don't really want to play this on turn four. This is more of a turn five kind of card. You want to play this and then play a swamp immediately. And you either uh, deal two damage and gain two life um, or draw a card, lose a life. Like both of those are very, very good options. Uh, really like this card. And then the card from uh, Dominaria that the one card in the cycle that hasn't seen nearly as much play as all the other ones has been Dread Dreadshade. And I think that's mostly because that black hasn't really had a good shell around it. But maybe with the help of Dread Presence, maybe we're actually getting there. Um, you know, black has a lot of good removal. We're playing Walk the Plank here because it kills basically everything in the format. There's only just, you know, just a couple of Merfolk that see play. But it basically is two mana, you know, terminate. Kills, you know, basically every single creature. And we got some cast downs. Uh, M20 gave us some good options with Legion's End, Noxious Grasp. We got some more good sideboard cards there in black. Um, we're going to be playing some Command the Dread Hordes for the late game stuff. Uh, we got Knight of the Ebon Legions. I guess this is our other M20 card. Um, this isn't like a real aggressive deck, so it's not like, it's not like our Knight of the Ebon Legion is going to be taking over early on, but it's, it's still just a really good card to have later on in the game. You know, like with that activated ability, it's a very big creature. It's hard to deal with. Um, so it's a, it's a good one drop that allows you to double spell later on in the game and yeah that's kind of what we have we have some powerful six mana planeswalkers with liliana and ugin eldest reborn can like bring back our dread presence or anything like that bring back our chupacabras midnight reapers help us draw some cards we kind of have just like a lot of pretty decent cards in here so um yeah let's give this a try mono black midrange yeah black cavalier is another good option. I'm going with Doom Whisper instead. But yeah, I like the Black Cavalier. You know, it's it's hard to fit in everything. Let's give this a try. We so I'm playing 23 swamps and two um of the Cabal Strongholds. We don't want too many Cabal Strongholds because they are, like at first, they are colorless lands for like Dread Shade, and we want a whole lot of swamps, of course, because of Dread Presence. Oh, I should have switched my avatar to like Liliana. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I really like Golos. The. I'm gonna just get rid of Cabal Stronghold. I think so. It's my Black Cat. The Chromatic Black deck that we played the other day was was pretty sweet. Honestly, I could see playing Golos instead of Doom Whisperer, maybe even in this deck, because Dread Presence and Golos work really well together. Golos just works really well in this deck, honestly. Um, yeah, I want to keep this against the red deck. Because, you know, you can go grab your Swamp <clears throat> to trigger Dread Presence again, or you, Golos is a good card to go find Cabal Stronghold uh, to get you even more mana. And the reason why I like Cabal Stronghold adding a whole lot of mana, of course, is Dread Shade. Yeah, this is this is Hawkeye here. He's here next to me, and he's in uh, the in game as well. So. 
Sun Home Stalwart. He's got First Strike. So I want a Midnight Reaper out first, so if they killed, if they did have like Lightning Strike to kill Dreadshade, that we'd be drawing a card. Yeah, we're gonna be playing the the Pride Mate deck here later on tonight. Get even more cat stuff going on. Leave the 4-4 back to block. Yeah, the deck... Like, this deck could play uh, Black Cavalier instead of... Instead of Doom Whisper. We don't have, like, a lot of creatures to sacrifice, though. Don't quite have lethal. We have nine damage that we could do. The dread shade could be a seven seven. Um Let's do this. Yeah, Squire's like our one card that's good to sacrifice. So unless they have a removal spell, this should get them. All right. Good job, Dreadshade. We're going to play our early removal stuff. Let's get rid of Ugin's. We'll keep a Liliana. Hmm. So I'm just going to cut Knight of the Oven Legion here with bringing in Cry of the Canarium. 
Yeah, I guess the Elder Tree board is probably slow. Yeah, that was probably a good card to cut. We just got to replace a Johnny here, get a mono black avatar. Hey, Mukton, it's going good. Uh, I don't, I don't know what the Fen Lurker is. I don't think I know what that card is. Yeah, Dreadshade is. Dreadshade is awesome and Dread Presence. Both of our dreads. Double dread. Those cards are very strong. Ah, uh, your... Your Ox Fen Lurker. Okay, a 1-1 one, one that ETVs each opponent exiles a card from their hand. Yeah, so I think that kind of card... That's definitely going to be better if you are going more for the creature sacrifice theme. You know, if we're going more Plague Crafter. Uh, Plague Crafter and um, the five mana Cavalier and everything like that. But I'm playing Squire instead because I, I want to hit land drops. Like, we, we have a, a higher curve, and especially with Dread Presence, like, hitting, hitting land drops is a priority. And so that's why I'm going with uh, Seeker Squire. Just playing a couple of those to help us hit some lands. Playing the Swamp means I could end step Contempt, but keeping the Swamp in hand means if they have Dread Presence, or sorry, if we draw Dread Presence. Cry the Carnarium looks kind of silly, of course. Yeah, Liliana Dread or General. Triple Dread. We got our Double Dread and the Dread Horde General. Alright, who should our Avatar be? I have conquered death. As should we I go with Liliana you. or the Eternal Army? I love what they've done to the place. Let's go, Liliana. Yeah, disfigure definitely is a consideration. That feeling wasn't like maybe disfigure is better than cry the carnarium. Like maybe the cry the carnariums aren't necessary. Um. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot of other good removal at the two mana slot that I just wanted to play instead of disfigure. All right, can we hit lands? Can we hit land drops? No, back end never have. Go night, go. Boo. That's not good. Now we keep our two lander. We don't want to draw a six drop. Yeah, you, you can find the Esper Flyers list by going to the Stream Decker page or the YouTube channel. It's up on the YouTube channel as well. You can find the list on either of those places. No.
Yeah, yeah, Stamp It. Yeah, I'll be playing the new, like, the Arena, I don't know, Arena Modern format or, or whatever we'd want to call it. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be playing that format. Okay. Dreadshade. I am, Dreadshade is, you know, open to Lava Coil here, of course, but it's going to be pretty hard for me to wait till like turn five to protect Dreadshade from Lava Coil. Yes, they said that they're not going to add any new sets in right now, and whenever there's rotation, basically all it's going to be is this standard format plus the uh, whatever the fall set is. Like they're just going to be adding sets to it, you know. But there's they're not like it's going to look like that. They're not going to go back and put old sets in, on arena uh, at the time. Yeah, and it's called historic. That's right. I couldn't remember the name of it. But yeah, historic is. That's the name of it. This whole three mana thing is kind of a bummer. We will not fail. Honestly, maybe 25 lands is not enough in my deck. Maybe I need 26. With having cards like Dread Presence and Dread Shade liking you to have extra mana. I'm not beating this Nissa and stuff. All these cards are like kind of situational, you know, like this is, it's going to be tough for us to outgrind the Risen Reef deck, basically. Risen Reef's really hard to beat. It's certainly possible that Aldous Reborn first chapter isn't very good, but I do really like the third chapter. Try this. I'm just gonna bring in the noxious. Um, the noxious ends. The nox, whatever. The noxious cards. Noxious revival. No. Bring in those things. The kill the green and white stuff. King River cast down in the eldest reborns. 
All right, more lands than just two. We got three. Let's see if we get to draw a land still. Grasp. There you go. Noxious Grasp. I think on the draw, I'm probably going to take out the Knight of the Ebon Legions, but I wanted them on the play. Perfect time for Legion's End here. So if I walk the plank, they cannot Nissa next turn. That worked out. They were scared of the activated ability, I suppose, and then taking more damage and turning the knight into a 2-3. Hmm. We just need to play it. I don't like not getting any value out of Dread Presence, but with us already having another 5 drop and everything, we just got to play it. Yay! Uh, let's draw a card. Alright, so what card do we want? Yeah, I like playing lands second main face to not give not give my opponent the information about what's going on with the turn before making attacks and stuff. You know, like just attacking first and I'll take Dredge Aiden. Attacking first doesn't give them very much information about what your turn is going to look like whenever they're like whenever they make their decision. I don't want them to know what my turn's going to look like whenever they're making their decision of blocking or or not blocking and all that kind of stuff. So they have the the least informed decision right now. My plan is to play Swamp, kill Risen Reef, play Dreadshade. I think that's the plan. Yeah, I'm not going to walk the plank. I want I want to make sure Dredge doesn't die to a lava coil or whatever. It's alright, that Dread Presence drew another card and killed the Risen Reef. That was a very good Dread Presence. You Merfolk? No. You Merfolk?
All right, maybe on the draw, take out knights. The knight did a lot of work for us there, though. A lot more than expected. I don't want Command the Dread Horde. No, no, we don't want Command the Dread Horde. Do we want some duresses? Maybe get an extra contempt in here. One, a duress and a contempt. All right, let's try this. Game three. Wait, we're one and zero right now, right? Yeah, we beat a Boros deck, right? Pretty sure we won that one against the Boros deck. I don't think we lost. All right, well we lost. Bef the The game that we lost, we kept a two lander and couldn't draw lands. Let's see if we get there. Yay, we're getting there. We have a better curve though. We have a lot more two man interaction. So feel better about keeping this. Play another land of wealth. Darn. Let's see what their hand's all about. Autumn Vale is rude. I like Lotus Field. I think that's a, a really cool card. I like that card. Hmm. Just gonna pass. I don't. Again, I don't really want Dreadshade just to die to a Lightning Strike or Lava Coil right away. We'll have the Noxious Grasp here if there's a Nissa or that thing. They got four cards in hand. We have three removal spells. Looks like they may have more removal spells over there too. All right, now we got five mana, so now the Dreadshade won't die right away to a, a strike or a coil. That was good for us. Draw a card. So even if they kill Dread Presence, we still get to draw that card. These dread cards are sweet. Dread shade, dread presence. This is a combo here. Yeah, Spawn of Mayhem could maybe fit in the deck. I do like that card too. I 
probably not like this this mid range version. I think you'd want to be more of an aggro deck for the spawn of mayhem. But I think there is a I think there there could be a mono black aggro deck with um, the Knight of the Ebon Legion. All right, so it definitely feels like they have Autumn Veil or whatever, right? Veil of Autumn, Autumn of Veil. Let's let's just kill this Land War Elf. Let's see what happens here. Veil of Summer. All right, so I either contempt the Crisis or I play Ugin and shoot down Crisis. Let's just contempt Crisis. Keep more mana up for Dreadshade. It gains hexproof from from blue and black, and Ugin is not blue or black. Ugh. That's a combo. Just draw three. No lands either, just drew all of them. So they just have a handful of spells over there. Kidding me? Why the just all these Veil of Summers? Come on. So unfortunate. No, they're they're not more merfolks than legendaries. All these Vela Summers have been awesome for our opponent. And obviously that Risen Reef world. scampering Scourger combo. Be wary of the ground you walk on. I mean, Dread Presence and Dread Shade are pretty good cards, but... Tough to beat all those Veil of Summers. Obviously, re certainly regretting not playing our other Carnarium right now. Yeah, against my deck, Veil of Summer just counters everything, draws a card for one mana. Just one mana counter, counter draw a card. Not very fair.
I, can't, I just can't beat all these things. I can't beat Nessa, and I can't beat Omnath, and I can't beat Risen Reef. Because we know they just have a bunch of spells in hand. So, like... Like... I, can, I just can't let these things stay alive. Because I didn't... Yeah, so we could have killed Nyssa and, and Omnath, but then we're letting them keep Risen Reef alive. I took out the two things that would, like were their big card advantage. Even though Nyssa makes three threes. Doesn't draw just tons of cards like the other two cards do. Just we're in an unwinnable spot at that point. It's hard for mid-range decks to beat Risen Reef, that's for sure. Especially with all those Autumn Veils. But Risen Reef, Crisis, like, the card advantage there is better than the card advantage I got. I'll say that. Yeah, I, I had Masker Girl on the list for a while and ended up cutting Masker Girl. That was she was a card that I ended up cutting, but yeah, she's good there against the elementals. We're at the point of the game there that even if we play Masker Girl, they still have just a bunch of cards in hand and everything. Yeah, Finale of Eternity could be useful. I like that. Now I have eternity. Have eternity is nice. All right, decks curving out. Not super. Not super uh, excited about this matchup. I don't. I don't know if we're gonna win this. If we lose, it'll be kind of disappointing that we just play against this twice and lose the two times. Like to play against, you know, a non-risen reef deck, because the. I mean, it's just like like we're saying, like just the the card advantage risen reef supplies is just kind of too much, even with us curving out like this. I shouldn't have used that cast down. Sorry, I was just kind of talking. I thought I was going to be able to attack here, but I probably shouldn't be attacking into this Omnath. Anyway. I guess I have to. Put them down to five.
think we'd have a better chance against Simic Flash. They don't. Simic Flash doesn't have the card advantage that Risen Reef provides. Way too many cards. Still got the six cards. We'll see if we can get the last points through. As long as if they don't have removal for Dreadshade, they are they do just have to chump block Dreadshade over and over again. You know, it is just Dreadshade is just the abyss. Just makes them sacrifice a creature every turn. Hey, good job, no need to try. You beat a Risen Reef deck with this. You just played it played our deck that we're playing right now and beat Risen Reef. Good job. I will protect the virtue of this world. The land shall conquer you. So Dio Lol asks, is it worth playing drafts as a beginner? All right, so drafting is expensive. So it's kind of about like um, what kind of, you know, what you can kind of afford to play. It is expensive, but if you can afford it, I do, I do recommend it. I think that drafting is uh, one of the best ways maybe the best way to get better at the game especially as a beginner i think you improve uh very quickly with drafting and yeah i would recommend it secrets manifest before you well the problem well, even though we have an abyss where they have to just chump block every single turn, but unfortunately they have a Nissa that gets them a creature every single turn, so it doesn't really help us out so much. Hmm. Mass manipulation will do it. Maybe we are command the Dread Horde deck. Maybe that's where we need to be. Maybe I just need to be on all these duresses. Just 
is such a good chance that Duress whiffs. But if they if they're playing all these Autumn Veils and stuff, or Veil of Summers. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we go cry the Carnarium. I don't know. I don't know about Cry the Carnarium. I guess we're playing it. Just seeing like when we're playing when I'm playing Squire, Reaper, Chupacabra, the cry can be pretty bad. Yeah, of course, Z. Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine to ask Chad if anybody has a deck list that you're looking for. Of course. Yeah, mostly have cry like the cry in the sideboard is is mostly for like the mono white mono red um, vampires with the Danto Vanguard. Like that's that's why I have cry the Carnarium in the sideboard. This specific matchup, yeah, Ritual of Soot is miles better because it kills the Nissa lands and everything like that. Hey, X Greg, thank you so much for that support. There, hope you're also having a good Sunday afternoon. Yeah, Discord, Discord's for everybody. You know, everybody can join the Discord channel. Awesome, yeah, yesterday, we had a lot of gifted subs yesterday, maybe. That's whenever you got yours, Photon. And we're already dead. I make it so Dreadshade doesn't die to Lava Coil, but you know they didn't just Lava Coil the Dreadshade last turn. Well, last game they they had Risen Reef turn three four five. Guess they're gonna have Risen Reef again turn three four five. Just why not? Just get a million of them. Just why not? So much for having a, a fun day on this Sunday. Just getting annihilated by Risen Reef. So we always look like we're doing okay, but and like, oh no, the Risen Reef wasn't so bad. Look, we're doing okay. Well, they have, they've already played like, they've already have like two extra lands out here and they just have a million cards in hand still because of the Risen Reefs.
Behold, nature's true power. Good sequencing now. Yep, now Omnath. Kill Dread Presence. And then they play their land to get the Omnath trigger. Good sequencing. Oh, no land though. All right, come on, Dreadshade. You can do it, little buddy. No, guess not. All right, maybe we got a tur two turn clock in the air. No. I mean, it honestly, makes a lot of sense the to, to have the top end of the elemental deck just be all the steel cards. They're all very good. Makes a lot of sense there. I don't know, I put my four duresses in. That's about all I got there. Just... Risen Reef? Really good. It's, can't really compare, can't really compete with Risen Reef with other mid-range decks. Um... Our deck, our deck was really cool. The two dread cards were really cool. Um, I just disappointed with with our matchups. I would like to play, you know, against anything else. But and elementals have their weaknesses. You know, like we we played elementals over the weekend, and you know, like we were we were losing. Like there, those decks have definitely have their weaknesses, but it's not really to the the mid-range deck built around the dread cards, you know, dread shade, dread presence. Um, while those two cards are are pretty sweet, they don't really compete with the elementals, especially how they can just make just way too many chump blockers for dread shade and everything. But yeah, risen reef, yeah, and the, and the fact that they just had multiple risen reefs every single game, you know, that it wasn't, yeah, that's that is a big weakness is not drawing risen reef and. I certainly did my fair share of not drawing Risen Reef when I was playing the Elemental deck. Uh, elementals do not fall over to that. So sideboard-wise, Ritual of Soot is Ritual of Soot is better to than Cry of the Carnarium because of the Nissa lands. The big problem with Ritual of Soot though is it does kill my like my best threat with Dreadshade. So that's a big problem with Ritual of Soot. Um, could have Bolas of Citadel instead of Command the Dread Horde. But I don't know, like the, the mass manipulation is just a, a huge beating too. Yeah, we don't have any crisis or anything really, really big like that. You know, like we we have our planeswalkers at our top end. I don't know. Uh, yeah, they they just outgrinded us. And 
that's just kind of how life is. Well, we'll have to give this deck another try here again in the next couple of days. Because I did like this deck. I did like playing the deck. Just kind of rough, rough pairings with Risen Reef. Oh, man. Uh, all right. Um, if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it, uh, even with our tough matches there. Um, but, yeah, hope you enjoyed the deck and everything. Uh but that's it here for Mono Black Midrange. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over on YouTube as well. But that's it here. I'll see you for another video.